Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Saturday, September 9th, 2023. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with two WWE events presented yesterday, SmackDown in Boston and the Superstar Spectacle in India. SmackDown last night emanated from the TD Garden and was broadcast live on Fox. In the main event, AJ Styles defeated Jimmy Uso. Following the match, Styles was the victim of an attack by Solo Sokoa along with the Judgment Day. Oh, wait, a Damian Priest! The Judgment oh, Day attacking AJ Styles! Is that a peace offering? Oh, the Samoan Spike! Earlier in the show, Styles had put his hands on Paul Heyman backstage, but Uso made the save. The Judgment Day was also in action, with Finn Balor and Damien Priest picking up a win over Ridge Holland and Butch of the Brawling Brutes. Also on the show, Charlotte Flair and Shotzi defeated Bailey and Io Sky of Damage Control. The finish came when Charlotte pinned Sky, thanks in part to a distraction from Asuka. In other results, L.A. Knight pinned Austin Theory. Theory avoiding disaster. Oh! BFT! Knight for the cover! And the victory! Here is your winner, L.A. Knight! Meanwhile, Superstar Spectacle also took place yesterday at GMC Balayogi Indoor Stadium in Hyderabad, India, and was the first WWE event presented in the country in nearly six years. The main event saw John Cena return to the ring for the first time since WrestleMania, joining with World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins to defeat Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci of Imperium. Cena scored the win for his team, pinning Vinci. After the match, he also gave a speech thanking the people of India. Indus Cher opened the show, coming out to the Indian National Anthem before falling in defeat to Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. Despite the loss after the match, Jinder Mahal of Indus Share was joined by McIntyre, Owens, and Zayn, as well as Matt Riddle, who all danced to the Indian pop hit, Natu Natu. Indian native and former WWE World Champion The Great Khali made an appearance on the show, addressing the fans and indicating he still had one match left in him. In other results, Gunther retained the Intercontinental title against Shanky, Rhea Ripley retained the World Women's title against Natalya, and Braun Breaker pinned Odyssey Jones. Natalia also made an earlier appearance, defeating Zoe Stark while substituting for Becky Lynch, who was unable to make the trip to India due to a damaged passport. Now with a look at last night's AEW and Impact Wrestling, here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. AEW presented Rampage last night on TNT. Featuring matches taped last Wednesday night at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum in Indianapolis. In the quarterfinals for the AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament, Penta El Zero Miedo beat Jay Lethal in the opener of the show, and Samoa Joe beat Jeff Hardy in the main event. Here is your winner in passing in the tournament in Ring of Honor World Television Champion, Samoa Joe! And one step closer to MJF, and we now know tomorrow night on Collision, it will be Samoa Joe! Penta El Cerro Miedo, the winner of that match, will face the winner of Roderick Strong and Darby Allen next Wednesday night live on Dynamite from Cincinnati. Samoa Joe, one step closer to Grand Slam, one step closer to an AEW World Championship title match with MJF. In other results, the Young Bucks beat Angelo Parker and Matt Menard in the Bucks' first two-on-two tag team match on Rampage in more than half a year. And in a six-woman tag team match, Britt Baker, Sky Blue, and Hikaru Shida defeated Anna Jay, Taya Valkyrie, and The Bunny. Impact Wrestling ran their 17th Victory Road pay-per-view special from the Westchester County Center in White Plains, New York. The main event saw Josh Alexander win a battle of former Impact World Champions, pinning Steve Macklin after Alexander delivered his C4 pile driver.
In the penultimate bout, Impact Knockouts World Champion Trinity retained her championship, scoring a pinfall victory over Alicia Edwards. During the match, after the referee was knocked down, Eddie Edwards attempted to put Trinity through a table outside the ring, but was prevented from doing so by Frankie Kazarian and Tracy Brooks. In other title matches, the Rascals held on to the Impact World Tag Team title with a victory over the Motor City Machine Guns. Leo Rush made his first defense of the X Division title by pinning Kushida after kicking him low and following it up with his final hour's frog splash. Tommy Dreamer won the Impact Digital Media title by defeating Kenny King in a match where Dreamer's career was also on the line. And MK Ultra, the team of Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich, also retained their Impact Knockouts Tag Team Championship, turning back the challenge of Giselle Shaw and Savannah Evans. In an Anything Goes match, PCO defeated Bully Ray. Prior to the match taking place in different segments throughout the show, Bully had repeatedly attacked PCO in an effort to thwart the bout. In other results from the main card, Jordan Grace defeated Diana Perazzo and Crazy Steve pinned Black Torus. In pre-show matches, Ace Austin and Chris Bay defeated Moose and Brian Myers, and Alan Angels pinned Little Guido Maritato, after Maritato accepted Angels' open challenge. During the show, it was also announced that Mike Tenay and the late Don West will be inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame on October 21st during Bound for Glory weekend. For the wrestling news, I'm Lou Kippelman. In more WWE news, Gunther set the new record yesterday for the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time, reaching 455 days since first capturing the title from Ricochet on the June 10, 2022 edition of SmackDown. This breaks the 35-year-old record set by the Honky Tonk Man who won it from Ricky Steamboat in June of 1987 and lost it to the Ultimate Warrior at the first SummerSlam in August of 1988. That record encompassed 454 days, including the leap year, in 1988. More information on the full attendance for last month's AEW All-In at Wembley Stadium WrestleTix and the Wrestling Observer Newsletter have confirmed that the total number of seated attendees for the show was 83,131. That total does not include comp attendees in the luxury suites as well as suite staff, which the Observer speculated would add another 2,240 people, bringing the potential total in the building to 85,371. This year's All-In set the all-time paid attendance record for wrestling at 81,035, breaking the previous record of 80,709 set by WrestleMania 32 in 2016. There is some dispute as to whether All-In or WrestleMania 32 hold the all-time total attendance record, as some independent reports in 2016 had the total WrestleMania attendance as high as 93,730. At the time, WWE announced a total attendance of 101,763, which has since been widely established as a significantly inflated number. In NWA news, Velvet Sky has departed the company according to a personal announcement on social media yesterday. Wrote Sky on Twitter, quote, I want to thank Billy for the opportunity and thank you to each person I worked with as it was so much fun and I learned so much from Joe and Tim on commentary. I wish the NWA my best with everything. See you all down the road, end quote. Sky had been working as a color commentator for the NWA since March of 2021. Now with a look at last night's CMLL show at Arena Mexico, here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. CMLL ran their weekly Friday night show inside their home building of Arena Mexico. In the main event, Atlantis Jr., Mascara Dorada, and Mystico defeated Guerrero Maya Jr., Templario, and Teton, two falls to one, in a Relevos Increíbles trios match where all six men represented a different National Football League team. Prior to the main show beginning, CMLL held an NFL-sponsored kickoff special, where mascots representing the six teams in the NFL Mexico promotion participated in an in-ring workout alongside Max Starr and Neon. The semi-main event saw Volador Jr. defeat Barbaro Cavanario in a lightning match, 
with 38 seconds remaining in the 10-minute time limit. In the Copa Independencia semifinal 12-man elimination match, Rujiro last pinned Star Black to advance to the Copa Finale against Esfinge on September 16th. The two will face off in the opener of the CMLL 90th Anniversary Show. In other results, La Jarochita and Zuhis defeated Yuvia and Stephanie Vaquer, and Caligua and Pequeño Mahia top Mercurio and Pirocito. CMLL also held a press conference on Friday to announce that the company's vacant Japanese women's championship will be decided in a match on September 17th between CMLL regular Dark Silhouette and Kohaku, who wrestles for the Japanese women's promotion Pro Wrestling Wave. The title has been vacant since this past January, when Delise and her husband Negro Casas left CMLL to join AAA. For the wrestling news, I'm Lou Kippelman. And we close with a look at Japan. Zack Sabre Jr. successfully defended the New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Championship for the 13th time on Friday, defeating Ryohei Oiwa during New Japan show inside Tokyo's Korokan Hall. Oiwa, who recently departed for a learning excursion in Pro Wrestling Noah, replaced Oleg Bolton, who was forced to pull out of the match with a left wrist injury. New Japan, Stardom, DDT, and other Japanese promotions are running shows today. We'll have full reports on the notable events of those shows on Sunday's newscast. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and 7 days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall. Just the Wrestling News. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.